such an innovative field. So uh, welcome, Jide. Thank you for talking to us. And he's got a fascinating title to his talk, The Academic Hack. Um, yes. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Jide. Thank Over you very much. You. Prof Keen, uh, and thank you, Prof Ahmed. I think um, our NGAP colleagues are so lucky to have both of you, with your years of experience. I mean, I wish I had that when I started out, you know. I probably would have done one or two things differently. So they are very lucky. Guys, this luck doesn't come better than this. So please seize the opportunity, show up every time, and contribute and learn, and, and I'm sure the mentorship you would always enjoy. It. So, um, and gap colleagues, if I can call you that, um, I'm not sure what I can. Uh, I cannot come up with something better. It's my privilege to be here to to share a few things with you. Um, trust me, there are so many opportunities. I'm going to talk about some of them right now. I also think you've made the best career decision of your life to be an academic because you're going to get paid for working for yourself, essentially, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> so and I'll explain to you how. So. I call this my talk. Um, uh, when Prof. King reached out, I said, absolutely, yes. Uh, my calendar was kind of packed, but I thought, you know what, this is more important because this is about the future academics, you know what I'm saying? So I, I wanted to be here. I called it the academic arc. Uh, it's a bunch of things that I've learned over the years. Um, I might not look old, but I, academic, academia ages you inside, meaning that you can walk so much that you actually feel very old. So I always tell people in my head, I feel like a 65 year old because I started very early and I had to do a lot of days and nights to get to where I am right now. So I feel I feel somewhat old. So these are just hints for navigating. Um, I, this is what I'm going to talk to you guys about. I'll introduce myself very briefly. Uh, the introduction that Prof King gave is also a fantastic one. Um, I'll tell you about teaching and research. You probably have opinions about those things, but I'll, I'll, I'll mention a few things. Academic citizenship, what does that mean? Uh, drills, etiquettes, things that are not written in any books. And if you get them wrong, uh, it will be bad for, for your career. Promotion, uh, it's about knowing yourself. I'll talk about that. Who are you, especially identity as an academic, it's very important. Then growth, well-being, politics. You'll be surprised uh, on in universities. It's almost like ANC and EFF in universities. You'll be so surprised how much politics are there. So I'll tell you what to look out for. And conclusion will be very short. So thank you for the time as well. I think I got started maybe uh, two minutes earlier, so I needed the time actually to go through this. So I'm a computer scientist, like Prof. Keen has said. I've, I have about 13 years of experience um, counting. Then uh, I would like to say my skill is just computer whispering, so theory and practice. I can talk to, talk to computers in many ways. Interest, artificial intelligence and applications, algorithms. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but anything you see on your screen, uh, those are the things I create. In, public, in, in research, I write theories around those things. And in practice, I do consulting uh, in about creating those things. So basically, that's, that's the expansion of it. Now let's talk about teaching and research. So teaching. Now you probably will never do anything more noble than to teach. So it's the, and your students are the new gold, and people miss it, and because a lot of people miss it. There's a huge opportunity for you. So the moment you step into the classroom, especially when you're teaching first years, you have uh, 18 year olds there. Trust me, that's gold. Whatever you forge them to become is what they're going to become. So that opportunity is massive. For me, I've been milking that opportunity for years. I've trained my students into like uh, like soldiers of some sort, computational soldiers. So I'll, I'll explain to you what I mean by that as I continue. Um, queries, students feel bad when you ignore them. So just automate your queries. Maybe you have an FAQ somewhere to say, these are the frequently asked questions. I know you don't have every time to, uh, to respond to 200 students perhaps. The more clear your content is, the lesser questions you're going to get. So don't change rules mid-semester. Don't work on a learning guide that's very clear and, and then you'll get lesser queries. There are things you never delegate as a teacher. Marking of your exams and setting of your questions. Remember that. Um, this is for IR. Your learning contents are all on the internet now. So <laughs> be, you better be very uh, sure of what you're putting out there. It's, uh, it's an audition on itself, in, it, in itself. So if you're not sure of some content or, or you're not sure of the design of your slides and stuff like that, take a second look at everything before you actually go on and put it on Blackboard 
because the students can screen grab it for a WhatsApp status on their Instagram stories. And then they'll be like, is that a lecturer at UJ that said that or did that? So it's bad for the brand of the university and for yourself as well. Um, your module, someone is going to teach it after you. So don't bury bodies in your module, all right? You might get by, get good teaching evaluations. Uh, what else can you get? You get pass rates that are high. However, the module wants is supposed to teach 10 competences. You taught four competences because you're lazy, maybe. And then someone takes the module after that, then they just look back at you. Even if you've left the institution, it's bad for who you are, it's bad for your identity. Uh, innovate where possible. I know everybody, can, not everybody can be a computer scientist, but you'd be surprised how many free innovations or technological tools that you can adapt in your field. And they're all online uh, that you can try. Excellence. So I was shocked the first time they referred to me as an excellent teacher. I was very shocked. I didn't even think I could ever, ever be privileged to have that kind of title. And I started reflecting, is this just a hype? Am I being hyped or what? Then I realized that the difference was that every time I taught from my heart, my students can feel it. When I step out there, I just, it's a matter of my heart every time. So I will encourage you to teach from your heart every time. And when you do that, you'll be surprised. People will relate to you. It doesn't matter what accent you have, what race you are, how tall or how, tall or how short you are, your skin color, all those things don't count. Every student in your class will relate and they will see you mean well for them. And when that is done, trust me, you'll be an excellent teacher, recognized or not. All right, let's talk research. Um, you need to do your PhD and finish it. I learned, I heard one of you guys saying, I want to finish my PhD. That's a good dream. Finish it. It's going to liberate you. When you're in a, in a meeting or in a room and in, in academia, PhD is like matric in academia, by the way. So you learn that after you're done with your PhD. But before you even finish your PhD, you're like grade four, grade five students kind of thing in academia. So nobody takes you seriously. You, you really don't have, have a voice. So you need to finish it at all costs. Publish or perish. I am sure you've heard it before. It is real. In academia, many things are subjective. Like the best teacher is, is very subjective. Some people could be like, this guy gives more content, the other guy is more kind. So depending on what you are looking at. However, in academia, numbers don't lie. So publications in top journals do not lie. If you want to be a scholar, you want to be brave to talk about your topic, please publish, read very hard, pick a domain that you're passionate about and publish. Uh, this is the only thing that cannot be contested. You can be called from average university to come and talk about your research if it's top, top research. So PhD in the same department, I've always believed it's a bad idea, all right? I know some of you cannot avoid it, so hey, if you're already in, you're in. I'm sorry, all right? The reason why it's a bad idea is for one, inbreeding. So your supervisor supervised three colleagues in the department, and every time there is voting, it goes that way, all right? Singular views as well. So let's say you leave UJ, you're doing your PhD at VETS. So you get to VETS in that department, they do things differently. They come to UJ to do things differently. It gives you two perspectives. So you begin to learn that there is no one way of doing things. And that allows you to accommodate people as well, especially philosophically in a space where everybody's an intellectual. But if you've always been in the same department, bachelor's, honors, master's, PhD in the same department, you are retained and gap, you were a lecturer, you were a senior lecturer, you were associate professor, you are a full professor in that department. There's just something that's going to be missing there, in my opinion. This is debatable, by the way. Some people have exceptions. However, in most cases, you realize that that affects the view of academics. Still on research, uh, you have to publish useful content. Trust me, I'm a mathematician myself. I can publish a lot of X's and Y's all right, to scare people. But then <laughs> if that, if that uh, X and Y does not translate to social impact or something that people can relate to, I don't think it's worth spending one's life on. Some theories actually after 40 years find a lot of relevance. That is good, that's true. However, in a continent like Africa, we need solutions now. So you better focus on publishing things that are very applied. Um, I'm not sure of your field. Some fields require many, uh, many authors, many stuff. However, I want to encourage you to at least, if your field allows you to, to be a sole author of few early publications. And at least be a first author, that your PhD should be able to give you that. So if you publish from your PhD, for example, you will become first author of those articles. Very important. Admin is going to kick in later. When admin kicks in, when you're a senior lecturer or you're an associate professor, you will have little time. You actually be pushing your students forward at those times and less time to actually work on your own ideas. 
So if you're under 40 years of age and you're listening to me, please, the moment you have some points on the board, apply to, for NRF rating. There are P and Y ratings, so you can get those. They are less con contested than the other ones, which are like CB ratings. So with, I think, a few journal, maybe two journal articles, three conferences or five conferences, you might be considered for like a Y2 rating or something like that. Depending on your field, though, I don't want to speculate. Check the um, requirements of NRF uh, for those ratings. So I know some people are fighting for IR. They're like, oh, you know what, for IR, what is that? You know, I'm, I'm in history department. I don't care. Uh, whatever you do, just think about to introduce technology to it. Because the same guys were fighting electricity about 100 years ago, they got washed away. All right. Some guys were fighting even chariots or, or cars. There are many things we use today that people were fighting. All right. And they, they're here. So we are telling you now that machines will be able to do more in future. You have to just listen and put it as part of what you're investigating in some way for your research, for your teaching as well. So go with the flow. Don't fight it. That's what I would say. Ethics. Guys, I cannot shout this one enough. Ethics can end your career overnight. All right? I know you do a research, you do uh, questionnaires, and you're waiting for people to complete them, and you're feeling like I'm bored, and the paper requires 200 responses, or you have 35 responses. Then you decide to lie in the paper to say, I got 300 responses and whatnot, whatnot. Your day would come, and when it comes, it's going to be very, very brutal. Um, what's it called? Um, another one is um, uh, plagiarism. Avoid those things, all right? Take your time to write, all right? Avoid copying content, content, avoid copying other people's solutions. Ethics is very, very, is a big issue. And it's the only time in the room that no academics will support you. So if you, if you are not a great teacher, when students report you, your head of department is going to say, okay, how can we nominate this person for um, development, professional development? And then they send you to promotions um, department. Those guys will help you now to teach and how to learn. But when you are um, having ethics issues, it's just escalated up the chain of command. Nobody backs you up. You're thrown out there, and you cannot even get a job in another institution. So it's really bad. Please watch out for that. So if your PhD is a cockroach PhD, all right, I'll tell you what I mean by that. And that's why I decided to use the word cockroach, because I don't want to name any field. All right. Sometimes certain things get funded by the industry because they need it. But you are not passionate about it. You don't even think it should be researched at all. So maybe somebody in the industry just is interested in researching how many legs a cockroach has or species of cockroaches. And then you spend your whole life, three years of your life, researching and you got a fantastic PhD because it was funded. They pay for your rent. They paid everything. The moment you graduate from that PhD and you know you're not passionate about it, please immediately change your domain. It's allowed. By all. It's great. Just change it immediately. And yes, my PhD is in this thing. However, in my field, my domain, I'm investigating this topic going forward. Academic citizenship, um, internal and external. I've got a few things for you. Internal, help wherever you can. Like when Prof. King wrote to me, I said, hey, would you like to speak to NCAP? I said, yes, because these things are not paid for. And you cannot think of them in terms of payment. You know, Think of them in terms of impact and helping. All right? So yeah, you have to help where you can. Do not lead on a hype. So someone picks up a phone and says to you, oh, because you're a black woman, oh, because you're a South African male, because you're this, come and become head of this department, and you know you are not ready. You look at your CV, you know in your heart that you're not ready. Please do not do it. They are setting you up to fail. Because when you fail and you fall flat on your face, it's bad for you, bad for everyone around you. So you rather build momentum first, build some capacity so when the time comes for you to lead, then you're right. You can be respected by the people that you're leading. Um, when you lead, again, it's not going to be forever. Please remember collegiality. Even the, your head of department, your dean, your vice chancellor, when they all leave their office, they go back to, the, to their offices, their small rooms, and they have to apply for everything to, for other people to approve it. So do not be fair when you lead. Don't think, don't think like, yeah, I'm a president. I can make anybody do whatever. No, it's not the case. Um, in terms of intern academic citizenship, I always advise uh, young academics to get involved only after PhD. Finish your PhD first before you become deputy head of department, for example. It's too much work. Um, external academic citizenship, it's about society, so get a, a community project. 
something you're passionate about. If you like boxing, you can volunteer in the boxing gym to help young lads take them away from the streets, you know, where they're supposed to be doing crime. And then if you like uh, plants, you can, there are many ways you can volunteer. If you like kids, there are many ways you can volunteer. Um, if you have a few wins, please put yourself out there very quickly, all right? Uh, someone might just be watching. So get yourself a LinkedIn account, give talks. Don't be shy, you're going to improve, don't worry. Collaborate uh, with colleagues. Do not, not everything is competition, all right? Some days you look at the other guy, he has something you don't have, and you have something they don't have. Write to them and try to collaborate. Innovate as well, where you can, and try to inspire people. Um, external, UJ and many other institutions, they take funding very seriously. So always be on the internet to search for awards and grants and apply aggressively for them. You might, ne you might just be lucky. You might just get, say, about 5 million rands from uh, NetBank to, on a project that you're passionate about, and UJ will celebrate you. And when it's time for promotion, those things count under the external academic uh, banner. Monetize your field. Every field in the world has value. So if the guys that have gone ahead of you have made it boring, it's your job now to make it exciting. All right. Your PhD supervisors might have made it boring. That's not your job to think about that. Think of how you can make it exciting. So, and ask yourself the question in the industry, who is willing to pay for your graduates? Speak to those guys because they can take your graduates as interns. They can hire them and stuff. I do a lot of that in my space. Drills, etiquette, and unwritten rules. Very important stuff. So, as an academic, you are no longer an eight to four or nine to five person. I'm sorry to break your heart. Uh, but you would get rest. You're going to get rest. So if a student is drowning and messages you 10 minutes past 4 p.m. and you're like, oh, I don't read emails after office hours, whatever, whatever. There are academics that do that, and it works for them. But trust me, on a general note, most academics don't do that. They are superheroes. Academics are superheroes. They, they even respond to you 2 a.m. in the morning if they are up and they are working at the time or writing an article. So be more flexible in your mind. Don't be a box, a time box person. Because there's nothing like that. Uh, your body clock will change even if you're going to, say, uh, Canada to go give a talk. And you've been used to certain body clock. What we call body clock is when your body knows it's time to sleep and it's time to wake up. Then you get on a 35-hour flight, you realize that, boom, all of that just changes. So uh, do not be stuck on time and timing like that. You know, you can be more flexible. Uh, show interest with swift responses to email. This thing is gold. you would be so surprised. Someone can send an email out to be like, if you're interested in this, please let me know before close of business tomorrow. You know you're interested. And you're like, oh, okay, since it's close of business tomorrow, then I'm going to send an email tomorrow morning. Don't do that. If you want it, you send the email right now so that you're one of the first people to respond and hence you get more chances, more opportunities. Academia is a, is a network of strong opinions. Uh, don't mess it up because you, you, there'll be no place to hide for you. All right. So let's say you're an academic at UJ because in your department you messed up. A senior academic in your department just talks to another academic in another department, your faculty, about how much you're messing things up. And then at the floor of Senate, it comes up, comes up on how much you're messing things up. <laughs> Trust me, it's just a matter of time. There'll be no place for you to hide. So uh, they have strong opinions, academics. Uh, their opinions are very difficult to change. So make sure you, 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 you have good opinions. Mentoring and nominations, you have, secret, you have eating admirers, so just keep doing great work. Uh, some guy in the faculty can see you, could be vice dean of something. They will never write to you to tell you they can see you. So just do your great work. You can use the social media, like I said, or like LinkedIn to do your great work. They will nominate you for stuff very soon, and they can even request to mentor you. Uh, emotional intelligence, you have to care about the feelings of others. Don't just say things that will hurt people and, and then get away with it. Uh, beware of cultural norms. All right, there are, in the room, thank God we have two of them here. There are older academics, all right. They come with years and years of what we call wisdom. It's not written in books, all right. You can be very sharp, you can be very smart, you can be very young. Now imagine yourself now 40 years after. You're gonna be better than you are now, isn't it? So these guys were as smart as you when they were your age as well. So, or even better than you, some of them. So now, they've now aged over the years to learn even more stuff. So you just have to, to, to just be more, uh, observe the culture, listen more kind of thing. Yeah, listen, learn, especially in meetings. Uh, you're coming in end gap, your PhD is not yet done, you don't know how things are done, just listen and you learn. In your email, start and end with messages of goodwill. So what is that? Your first line should sound something like, uh, 
I hope this email finds you well. The last line should be like, enjoy your day further or do have a nice day. Or thank you for the time and put into something. So don't go good day. I, I read a lot of emails. I'm like, good day. That's cold. That has no emotions. All right. So don't do that. Promotions, know thyself. Uh, there are four major portfolios, research, teaching, internal and external, like I said. The balanced academic, are you a balanced academic? So you have to know yourself very early. It's called 4411. When it's time for promotion, they will, they will explain that to you. You're going to have 10 points, and you're going to spread it across these four things. So a balanced academic goes 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four, uh, research, 4-4 four, four teaching, 1 for internal, 1 for external. Are you an impactful teacher? An impactful teacher typically is about 3 five, one, one. So your, your teaching is you rate it higher because you spend more time to, to improve people's lives and all of that. You can be an impactful researcher. It's also the word needs a lot of research. So then you, in that case, you'd be a 5311. Then one other interesting configuration is this one, 3322, which I call the balanced socially impactful academic. So they do good teaching, do good research. However, most times they're out there either helping their community or getting funding in or being head of the department running a center, replying many emails, doing a lot of administration. So these guys are much more into their communities. So A and B is where your interest lies. Those two things you saw, research and teaching, that's for your expertise and interest. C and D, however, are things that you don't, you can't find them in books, like sourcing for funding, societal impact and stuff like that. At lecturer level, help your department. At senior lecturer level, make sure you stand out in your faculty. You're a senior lecturer. That thing is huge, trust me. Then when you're an associate professor, you must be known in your university. Um, don't stay in a small space. At professor level, then you take the gospel to your society. You, you, your society actually knows what your research, what your professor, you know what I'm saying? Then uh, if your plan is to hide, academia is the wrong place for you. It's wrong business for you. Um, you cannot become a professor and start hiding. Uh, you know so much. You, the community needs your, your mind and, and what you can do. And, and you cannot stay in a small space and hide. Who are you? I think I'm wrapping up now. Who are you? That's a good question. So you, everybody has to define that for themselves. Don't, there's a saying, fake it till you make it. But in this case, please don't fake it. All right. You might not be perfect at first. You're going to get corrected. So don't fake it, but learn till you make it. That's what I would say. All right. And for me, uh, an example is I used to react to everything. I used to get hot. You know, when someone sends an email, I respond immediately. But now I'm, I'm a lot more mature than that. People send emails that they are intending it to hurt me. I just smile. And I wait for like two hours. And I say, dear this, thank you for the feedback. We'll work on this and get back to you. Have a good day uh, ahead. And that's it, you know. So you can fake it, you make it. You can fake, don't fake it, but you make it when you learn. Be humble, but don't be a clown, all right? Don't roll on the floor, okay? Um, that's, academics can smell when you are fake. Oh, you're like, oh, Professor, this, without you, you we will not be alive. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Everybody can see you're a clown. You know what I'm saying? But then if you want to compliment someone, a colleague or a professor, pick a specific thing that you're sure they have done. Oh, I read your article on this. It was good contribution. I read the future work. Would it be possible to collaborate on that aspect of the future work? That is more genuine. Um, when your passion is ignited, there's going to be sparks in your eyes. So uh, be, make sure research teaching Teach modules that you're passionate about and do research in areas that you're passionate. Um, always remind yourself of why you want to be an academic. If the initial reason was because you couldn't get a job elsewhere, there's no problem uh, because you can learn how to be passionate about something. You just have to read more about different things to find your passion. Then be unique. Uh, technology helps you to be unique, like I said before. Uh, allow technology to help you. So well-being politics. Uh, promotion, allow yourself to mature, and it's not a function of time. So I'm not also an academic that will tell you to wait till 10 years. That's why I could do it at this age as well, because I believe in doing it quickly and, and then impacting after. However, allowing yourself to mature means you have to learn everything it means to be an academic, be good at your research, your teaching, all of those portfolios, so that you are not just a hype. You know what I'm saying? The hype, when people think you're a hype and they check it out, then the hype is real. You know what I'm saying? So uh, teach passionately, um, stay with your uh, loved topics or subjects if it's possible, if your department allows you to. If I was a head of department and we're doing workload training, I'll first ask people what they're passionate about. It, it, uh, it affects students. When you're teaching something you're not passionate about, 
Um, 3ds plus between your promotions, in my opinion, is pretty quick. All right. So when you just add a promotion less than three years ago, be busy building more and not too much of looking at the ladder you want to climb again because our colleagues will see you as a borderline case most times. So um, in other institutions, there's, there, there are standards. So don't be uh, a don at UJ alone. That cannot be um, a don at UCT, for example. Uh, they don't hide in a small space. Don't, don't try to get promotion very early and then you're not ready and stuff like that. So avoid borderline cases because it's a lot, it, it makes academics at faculty level and senate level to discuss a lot about, about you. They were like, this person is not ready. Why are we promoting? Why should we promote? And things like that. Remember, after your promotion, great powers means great responsibilities. So mentoring, um, get senior academics to check out your portfolio before you submit for promotion. Tag along supervision. Uh, look, speak to a professor or a senior lecturer around you to say, can we co-supervise? Uh, when you're done with your PhD, please, that's when you should take admin. Uh, do not take more than one admin role at a time until you're a full professor. All right? Don't let anybody give you too much work. So you are a member of ethics committee. You're already a deputy head of department at the same time. You're supposed to be grow, growing your academic portfolio at that time. But you're spending the time on admin. It's, it's not helpful. Free up your time to publish. Uh, time is money. If you are looking for money and you're doing some part-time work, don't worry about it. When you get your promotion in time, your salary will go up anyway. And when you publish in time, then you're going to get subsidies from publishing. So money is also in academia, actually. So don't miss that point. Don't, don't go and spend so much time on other things and not, and not publish. Stay away from politics. Professors are good at kissing and making up. Professors can argue and argue and hate each other for one week. But because they're intellectuals, so next time when they, they support each other's view, then they just kiss and make up. But at that time, you've already taken sides with one professor then it's bad for you. So camps can change on you anytime. That's politics. You, you stay away from that. Um, other issues, you're a brand. So when you're on Facebook, be careful what you're endorsing, what you're liking and sharing. So um, for an example, if you see something like a, gro a very video that is, is not so great, uh, maybe it's people butchering people online, and you like you share it, or a political view that is too strong, and then you share it, you've forgotten that people following you as well might not be of that view. So you might, you might just lose your credibility very early because uh, an academic is known for their credibility. So that's your juice. That's your, that's your goal there. You're trusted, so you mustn't share anything. Um, don't be too busy when the big guns call. When Prof. Keen calls me, I, I cannot say I'm busy. You know what I'm saying? I have to make a plan. So because it's an appraisal of some sort. Um, do not target the students of other supervisors. Um, your colleagues will come for you at some point if you do that. Uh, your well-being, take care of yourself. Guys, I repeat, take good care of yourself. Academics are one of the most easy people to replace. You know why? Their legacy, their legacy is always living. Their module is already defined. So if they are sick, someone can just jump in, look at the learning guide, look at where they stopped, and continue teaching. If they're if they dead, someone can just say, okay, the research, Let's write a volume of a book to honor this professor that is dead, and life goes on. So if you don't take care of yourself and you run down, uh, a month after, you'll be surprised that someone else is already taking your modules. Conclusions? Why do you want to be a professor, guys? You must always remember that, because when you're an academic, you're always going to be a professor one day if you work very hard. Um, what, why does this even matter to you? For me, it's always been a question of social impact. Um, Ask yourself again, are you the nightmare of others? Are you that lecturer that when you're done teaching, then your students see you in Santa, like that guy used to fail me. That guy used to not give us memos. That guy used to change the memos and rubrics every time. Are you going to be that person? What would be your legacy? That's another good question to ask yourself. Academia is about living in legacies. The obvious one is going to be the advances in your field through your research and your citations. Other things will be your teaching outside of your content. For me, outside of my content, I'll tell you the things that I teach. I teach a lot of discipline, hard work, dedication, character, respect, and social impact. Speak to any of my students, they'll tell you those are the things that I always manage to bring it up in my classrooms most of the time. Job and households, education is for employment. Make sure that when you teach, you do not train unemployable, unemployable people. When you train people that cannot be employed because you did not give them enough that you're supposed to give them, you're going to have blood in your hands because these guys will go back. First, they cannot pay tax, taxes to the government. 
they cannot help their family, they cannot pay their rent, they become uh, thieves or whatever in society, or nuisances in society, and that blood is going to be on your hands. So it's a very, it's a very serious job. There's what you call a non soldier. So when you do a great job, your teacher and uh, your students might never come back to tell you you did a great job. Don't worry about it. You're going to go down as a soldier that was unknown, an unmarked grave, we call it in, in the military. So, but there'll be jobs created through your skill sets. There'll be households that will be fed uh, by the things that you've taught. And before your career is over, make sure you train academic successors, like these two professors are busy training you guys now. You are going to be one of their successors as well. I've attended the funerals of great teachers, and it is thrilling. Everybody's just crying, because when anybody picks a microphone and, and just goes at it again, and all that great teacher helped them, Everybody feels it in their heart. And at the end of the day, that's what matters as for legacy. Then, guys, on a final note, please give your heart to this business. It's worth it. Academia is worth it. Give everything. You're teaching your research. Give your heart to it. And that's all I have for you guys. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the privilege to speak to you about these things. Thank you so much, Prof. G. Day. Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm about to finish Thank you, Prof. Really. Wow. Uh, thank you. I see you do have stars in your eyes. <laughs> I, I met you so briefly and visualized your thesis where I could see everything you have said you actually practice.